So if you want to be sat onto a cushion or anything, then please grab whatever you need. So just root this sit bones down or just find whatever is on the ground or in your cushion. Just try to become a little heavier, or a little bit more rooted through that connection point to the floor. See if you can create a little bit more lift or a little bit more height through your back. So you feel almost the rib cage elevate slightly away from the pelvis. Create more distance between the lowest rib and your hip bones. And in that space between your lowest rib and your hip bones, feel how the breath moves into that space. So allow your belly to really relax. So as you breathe in, feel the belly just kind of flop, just let yourself flop. So keeping that height and that strength through your spine, see if anything else around your spine can soften. So the shoulders, keep the head floating on top of the spine, but soften the neck, soften your jaw, soften any gripping around your eyes. See if you can soften the mind. If there's any busyness going on in there this evening. Imagining any passing thoughts to be like busy traffic going through your mind. Just step yourself onto the pavements and just observe the traffic without being amongst it. Just detaching yourself from that busy mind. It doesn't mean it's not there. You're just able to see it differently. As you maybe slow down your breath a little, see if you can sense that any busy traffic in your mind is slowing down or clearing a little bit. Let the rush hour pass. I'm going to invite you to bring in a count to your breath. I'll guide you through a few rounds and then kind of leave you to count mentally on your own just for another couple of minutes. So sink in with me when you can. I call it the box breath. So you're going to inhale for a count of four, three, two, one. Hold the breath for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one, hold the breath. Four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Hold. Exhale. And hold. Inhale. Hold. Exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Keep going on your own.
keep going another minute or so. We have a few more rounds to go, but just check that your spine is still straight and the rest of the body feels soft. Whenever you next exhale, make that your last counted exhale. And just allow the breath to return to a more organic rhythm. Just gently blink your eyes open. Then take an inhale to lift the shoulders up to your ears. And exhale to roll the shoulders down your back. If you need to readjust how you're sitting, then please just find another comfortable seat. We're going to stretch into the neck, so just make sure you're comfortable. Bring the hands out to the sides of the body. Just let the fingertips find the ground. Again, keep that real height and lift through your back. Imagine how someone just has their hands around the base of your skull and is just lifting the head up away from your neck so the shoulders can drop down away from the head. Then let your left ear drop over towards your left shoulder. So either your ear is to the shoulder like you're listening to it, or turn the nose towards your left shoulder like you're smelling your shoulder. See which gives you the better feeling of stretch that you need. Might be somewhere in between. See if that right hand can walk any further away from you. And as you next inhale, just lift the head of your right shoulder up. And as you exhale, pull it back and drag it down. Take one more there. Inhale to lift the head of the shoulder up. And as you exhale, draw it back and down. Just holding there for a couple more breaths. Let's try and sense the right side of your chest feeling open as well as that sideline of your neck. Sense the right side of your face feeling floppy. So keep your head exactly where it is. Just let that right arm relax. Maybe bring it to your knee. Use your left hand underneath the head and fully use your hand to bring the head back up straight so you're not having to use the neck muscles to contract after the deep stretch. Good. Then replace the hands out to the side. Let's take a full breath in here at center. And as you exhale, let the right ear drop towards your right shoulder. So again, decide whether ear to shoulder feels best or nose towards shoulder feels best. Maybe somewhere in between. Just micro adjusting the position until you find the peak point. Keep the rest of your spine tall and strong.
See if your left fingertips can walk further away from me. So on your next inhale, we're going to lift the head of the left shoulder up, draw it backwards, and exhale it down. There's one more there. Inhale to lift the shoulder up, draw it back, and exhale, draw it down. Just holding there for a couple more breaths, softening around your face, your jaw. Sensing the open space around the left side of your chest. Again, keeping the head exactly where it is, just let the left hand find the thigh. Use your right hand to fully support the weight of your head, and then use the hand to bring the head back up on top. Lovely, give the shoulders a little roll down your back, and bring yourself over then into all fours. Give your knees a bit of a stretch out if you need to. So stretch your fingers open into the ground so you've got a nice big surface area of your hands to the mat. Just give your back a few cat cow, just a little bit of movement, so after we've been sat still for a while. There's any rolling side to side with the ribs or circling the body, anything that feels good to just loosen up a little. So check that your thighs are in a straight line dropping from your hips towards your knees. If you want any padding underneath your shins or anything, you're going to be on the knees just for a few more breaths. So pad out under the shins to ele elevate your knees. And then walk your hands forward so we come into a puppy stretch. Again, you may want to cushion under your forehead if the head doesn't quite meet the ground. The armpits stay lifted and the elbows stay lifted. So take the arms further away from you. This is a little bit more comfortable for your shoulders if your hands are wider and will feel a little stronger for your shoulders if your thumbs are close together. Those of you that are very mobile through shoulders, if you want to come up onto your fingertips so the wrists and the elbows are lifted, then taking that. Think tailbone sweeping upwards towards the ceiling. You're aiming to bring the heart space and your chest space towards the ground. About five more breaths here, it can feel quite intense. So deepen into the breath or softly move the body if it helps. On your next exhale, press through the hands so the shoulders start to lift back up again. Coming into an all fours position, bring the hands back underneath your shoulders. Again, just any little soft movements through the shoulders to neutralize that. Allow that to come in. Gonna come into a twist from here. So we're just gonna slide the left arm underneath your right armpit. So the shoulder comes to the floor, and the temple of your head comes to the ground like you're listening to the floor. So left shoulder and left ear to the floor. So from there, you can either just keep gently pressing through your right hand. You want the shoulders to be stacked one on top of the other, ideally. 
Either you stay where you are, if this feels just enough for your back this evening, we'll still be here a while. So sometimes in yin, take the softer option to hold it comfortably a little bit longer. But if you do want to build in, then maybe lift the right hand up. You can either let it just hang back behind you or wrap it around the lower back to maybe find that left thigh. If you're feeling a bit squashed into the pose, it's possibly because your shoulders are near to your knees too much. So just nudge the shoulders forwards or the knees back and give you a bit more space. Work with the breath. Each time you exhale, maybe you find a little bit more depth of rotation or a sense of ease through the body. Taking a full round of breath where you are. Slowly bring your right hand to the floor if you'd lifted or wrapped it around. Take your time to press through the right hand and come up to all fours again. Any soft movement through the neck or through the shoulders. Then taking that straight to the other side, so your right arm is gonna thread underneath your left armpit, shoulder and temple to the floor. An option to wrap that left arm around your lower back or up to the ceiling. And again, if you're feeling a bit too squashed and struggle to breathe, try lengthening yourself out a little bit longer through the torso. Keep the neck relaxed, so draw the chin towards your throat slightly if there's pressure through your neck. Last couple of breaths where you are. Slowly start to unravel the left hand if it's wrapped. Pressing into that palm to bring yourself into all fours with any soft movement to ease that out. Come into a child's pose from there, taking the knees as wide as the mat is, keep the big toes touching, fold the body back. Keep the arms lengthening away in front of you for a couple of breaths. If you want to have a cushion underneath your forehead, please make sure that feels comfortable for you. So use the hands for the first couple of breaths to press into so that you push your sit bones in towards your feet. Think about tucking the tailbone so you feel your lower spine lengthen and open. And try to keep that connection of bum to heels, but just change the sensation of the arms to lengthen forwards instead. So you create the lengthening away from that lower back. As you breathe, see if you can breathe wide into your rib cage so that you feel the ribs press in towards the thighs as you inhale. And exhale, try and squeeze the ribs away from the thighs. They pull in towards the center line. If your arms still feel quite active, just let them become floppy now. In the next few breaths, just completely dropped into this child's pose.
Last couple of breaths where you are. Very slowly, begin to come up to an all fours position. Again, take a little wriggle through your hips. Tuck the toes underneath, come into a downward facing dog just as a way to stretch out your knees. Let's give the back of the legs a bit of a lengthen, keep it softly moving. A couple of deep breaths in there. Now, however feels best to get there, bring the right leg forward to coming into a lunge with the back knee to the floor or back knee to a cushion. Bring your hands one hand either side of your front foot. So if you want to have blocks under the hands, please take whatever you need to feel comfortable here. So just allowing your pelvis to sink forwards towards the front heel. Just check that your front knee isn't going too far over the ankle. So if you need to just wriggle your front foot forwards a little bit, then do get yourself set up. So knees above ankle and the hips can sink forwards. Allow your body to almost rest into this front thigh if you can. So we just allow then the head to round over towards your knee. We just allow our body to become heavy into this low crescent lunge. So a little bit like the child's pose, your right leg here is creating a little bit of compression in the front side of the hip, but lengthening the back line of the hip through the glutes, creating a little bit of compression into the organs of the torso but also then opening the left hip, opening the left thigh, opening your back. Last couple of breaths in this lunge. And we're going to keep the compression of the right hip and the opening of the left. You're just going to step into lizard. So your right hand is going to come to the inside of this front foot. Wriggle the foot open towards the edge of the mat a little. Your back knee now might be able to go a little bit further away, particularly after we've been in that lunge a couple of breaths already. Stay on the palms for a couple of breaths and keep your knee connected to the shoulder for the first few breaths. Then after a few breaths, if you want to go into it deeper, then allow the toes to turn out of your right foot. The foot can roll onto that blade edge of the foot if the hip feels okay too. So you lift the big toe upwards. So you create space then between knee and shoulder. Entirely up to you. I'll turn a little so maybe you can see that opening. So either you have the knee to shoulder or the opening. If you want to then go deeper into it, allow the outer elbow to come down, maybe the inner elbow comes down, maybe neither. If you've lowered the torso, find the point where you're not compromising your spine staying straight. So it might mean you actually need to lift up a little bit to keep the lengthening of your spine. Imagine someone has their hand on the back of your ribs and it's just pressing your ribcage forwards a little bit. So you lengthen rather than hunch over. about three more breaths where you are.
So if you're on your forearms, gently come back to your palms, flatten the sole of the foot to the floor, lift your hips backwards so you can slide this right leg around into your all fours position. Just give it a moment there, any soft movement to help it readjust. We're going to come back into a downward dog again, just to again straighten out the knees. Take a deeper breath in this inversion. And then gently stepping the left leg forwards to come into your low crescent lunge. So back knee to the floor, some padding, checking your front knee is stacked above the ankle. Hands to blocks if that gives you a little bit more comfort. And on this side, we've got one hand either side of the foot, and the body, if you can, resting into that front thigh. Bring the body forwards and the hips sinking down. Lovely. Allow your head to just hang down. The back of the neck is long. Soften where you can. If the shoulders are feeling like there's some pressure, try taking hands wider or further forwards, just changing up the position slightly. Last couple of breaths here. Lift the chest forwards with the gaze. Step the left hand to the inside of the front foot so we come into lizard with your knee connected to the shoulder to begin with. Maybe send that back leg a little bit further away if there's room to lengthen. Good. So if it feels enough where you are, stay where you are. If you want to build in those openings, the foot can turn out slightly and allow the knee to come away from your shoulder. The foot can roll onto the blade edge of the foot. So you're kind of looking at the sole of the foot. If that puts any pressure into your knee or feels awkward for your ankle, then keep the foot grounded. And again, if you want to lower onto the elbows or one elbow or no elbows, that's fine too. And find the place where your spine can still lengthen. Imagine a hand on the back of your ribs, just guiding the chest forwards slightly. Yeah, perfect. And make sure you're breathing still fully into your belly and into your back. Last couple of breaths. If you're on the forearms, come back to the palms. Lift your hips back and up so you can slide that left leg into all fours. Come back into a child's pose, this time with knees together. And now your head to round down to the floor or onto a cushion and let your arms come down to the sides of the legs, back of the hands to the floor. And just let your shoulders kind of melt around the sides of the knees.
Then you bring the arms back out in front of you. Come back forwards to all fours, tuck the toes and come back into a downward facing dog. Set the right foot forwards again into a lunge. Back knee to the floor. This time we're going to come into half monkey, start opening the back of the legs. So straightening uh, the front leg up, bring the hands back to the stay of the shoulders. You might want to wriggle your front foot forwards a little bit so that we can flex the foot. It's not really an active flex, so just lift the toes up and let the foot feel somewhat relaxed. The knee does not have to straighten. If you find the stretch and the knee is still bent, then keep the knee softly bent. Totally good there. So usually half monkey feels like quite an active pose with the foot flex and try and move the spine to stay straight. I'm going to ask you to just find some softness through it. So if it keeps a little bit of movement in there for a couple of breaths, that's fine too. And then find a point where you can find some stillness. Again, that compromises your um, spine staying lengthened, but without it feeling too active. So you're not actively trying to lift the chest but just drag the chest towards your ankle slightly. Let the head hang over into it. Again, block center the hands if that helps bring the floor to you, or resting onto knuckles or fists if it gives your wrists a break. From here, if you're using blocks under your hands, bring them with you. You're going to step your left hand over the leg. So both hands are on the right side of your mat. Will feel fairly horrendous, probably. So relax your eyebrows. <laughs> relax your face if it's just scrunched up a little. If your left hand loses the floor, it can rest onto your ankle or your shin there as well. That's fine. That's it. So really try and twist the shoulders around as far as they feel good to go, but without your toes following you. So keep the toes pointing up to the ceiling and the kneecap pointing up to the ceiling. It would just here for another couple of breaths. Gently bring the shoulders back center. So kind of staying as you are, we're going to bring this heel towards you so that you sit down onto your back heel. So your left sit bone is on your back heel. The right sit bone is floating. If you want to pad out that right sit bone with a cushion or a block, that's fine. If this doesn't feel good for your left knee, rather than having the leg folded, just step it out in front of you so you come into more of a janu, so the sole of the foot's against the inner thigh. Okay? We're going to find a fold again, so whether you're in that half hero pose with the leg tucked under or janu is fine. Take the hands out in front, just going to hold for about five to eight breaths, just allowing the body to hang heavy. So particularly if you are in that half hero pose and you're sat onto your left heel, you'll feel the hamstring probably feels a little bit tight as you come into this fold. That's completely a normal thing for this pose. So just keep the foot lightly flexed at the front. Allow your breath to give you a little bit of lengthening into that. Last couple of breaths, try to keep the shoulders level. Yeah, feeling good. After you have next exhaled, gently bring yourself back up. 
So if you have the leg out in front, it might feel more comfortable to sweep the legs around to one side or come back through a lunge, come back into your downward dog, just for however feels best to get there. Give the legs a bit of a stretch again, the back of the knees or the hips. Acknowledge how one leg feels different to the other. One may be feeling a little bit lighter or longer. So then stepping left foot forwards, place the back knee to the floor or to cushion. So then we're coming into half monkey again, so lengthening the left leg somewhat straight and flex the foot. So it might need to just shuffle forwards a little bit to give you that space to lengthen it. Ideally your back thigh is in a straight line so you're not too folded back yet. Hands to your block or to your floor, underneath the shoulders, wherever they feel helpful to be. So keep the tailbone lengthening back and the chest lengthening forwards, but find some softness through your back, so some set of ease through the shoulders and through the head. Last couple of breaths where you are. I'm going to step the right hand over the leg towards the left side. So again, if you have a block, bring it with you or the right hand can just rest onto your ankle or shin. Try and get the shoulders to turn almost parallel with the line of your mat but keep the knee and your toes facing up to the ceiling. Lengthen that tailbone back. Breathe a little bit deeper, soften your face, your jaw. Last full breath where you are. And gently bring yourself back square. So we're coming into that fold. So again, either the half hero, so you're gonna sit back onto the right heel, left sit bone is now floating, or tuck the foot in front so you come back into your Janu as your alternative there, so the foot's in front instead. Finding your fold when you're ready. Bernard, bring your gaze down a little bit more towards your knee. That's it. Perfect. Last couple of breaths where you are. Following your next exhale, bring yourself gently back up. Again, we're gonna come back into downward dog to stretch out the knees. You can either come forwards or sweep the legs around, step it back. 
bring the knees to the floor. If you have a cushion, bring it underneath your um, abdomen as we did last time if you were on this session. So if you've just had a big dinner or something, this might not feel comfortable, so see how it feels for you. We're basically gonna come onto lying on the belly with the cushion into that softer space of your abdomen. So either big cushion or you can fold it in half as something narrower and stronger. See how it feels. You want it in that softer place of the abdomen. So like we did at the very start of the practice, that space between your lowest rib and your hip bone and place your cushion into that space or your blanket. So having that, if you imagine the um, internal structure of your spine, this is just elevating this lower arch of the back up towards the ceiling a little bit just to lengthen and create a bit of space in the lumbar discs of your back. So a really nice one if you tend to have lower back tension to quite instantly release a lot of pressure from that space. So a really good one to do after forward folds that can create a little bit of tension in there. So just allowing the body to completely relax around it. If you know this is a pose that feels really juicy for your body and you want to come back to it at another time for a little bit longer, placing cushions underneath your thighs or underneath your shins can help your uh, legs, your knees feel a little bit more comfortable here as well. So just if you come back to it another time, think about that. Thinking about five more breaths here. Still allow the breath to come into the belly so it expands through to your back. Just lightly press into your elbows, tuck the elbows under so that you can release that cushion from underneath your belly. Coming into a chest stretch from here. So right arm is going to lengthen out to the side of you. The left hand is underneath the left shoulder. Pick up the left foot. Now roll yourself over onto the right side of your body. Allow the head to rest down to the floor. Make sure that right arm behind you is in line with your shoulder and palm is down to the ground. Your left leg that you've kicked over can be wherever you want it to be. Just let it completely re be relaxed wherever it feels best. Feel the breath move into that right side of your chest. You can open the fingers of your right hand a little bit wider. Like we did in the twist earlier, your left hand that you're looking at can either lift up to the ceiling and just drop back to hang, or wrap around your lower back if that feels good, or keep it where it is if that feels the right place to be. Take two really full breaths. Gently unravel the wrapped arm if you had it. So it's on the floor to support you as you roll back onto your front. Slide that right hand in underneath your shoulder. Bring the left hand out to the side of you. Pick up the right foot and then roll yourself over onto the left side of your body. 
Again, this right leg can be wherever it feels comfortable to be. Take a few breaths here with the right arm in front of you to start with, just taking the weight right over to that side of your ribs. Stretch the fingers open of the hand behind you. Relax your neck. And then if it felt like the right option for you, if you want to lift up that right hand and then drop back or wrap it round, take any further progression. So stay with the sensation of your breath moving into the chest space. Two more full breaths. And gently unravel your right arm if you'd wrapped it and use it to support you on your way back onto your front. Slide that left hand back under your shoulder. Press through the hand so you come up into all fours and take it back into your child's pose. Knees open or knees together, whichever feels right. Just taking a couple of breaths there. However feels best you get there, we're going to come straight onto your back. So rolling over, or sweep the legs around, bring yourself down. Open the arms out to the sides of you on the floor, so about shoulder height again. Let both knees drop over to the right. If you want to bring your pelvis over towards the left a little bit, then just adjusting your, um, your hips so that your spine feels really comfortable, but in a twist. So legs can either tuck towards your body and your right hand maybe anchors the legs down or keep the knees further away from you, which will be much softer for your back. So again, just choosing where feels the right compromise of feeling the rotation, but feeling comfort. Feel the breath move into your belly, into the ribs, into the back, across your chest. Really opening out into the full circumference of your torso. Staying where you are, take a deeper breath.
very gently bring the feet to the floor, the knees back up to the ceiling and just realign your pelvis back center. Taking the knees over to the left, so again, if you wish to shift your hips over towards the right slightly, it would make you feel a little bit more comfortable for your back. Finding that balance point again, where your knees are placed will feel slightly stronger or softer for the pose. Bring back that awareness of your breath awareness of where you feel it travel to in your body or where you can send it to Staying where you are, take a really full breath. Gently bring the knees back up to the center. Allow your spine to reset in the middle. Bring the knees in towards your chest, the hands around the shins. Give yourself a little hug and rocking your spine side to side into the floor. Coming into Shavasana from here. So if you want to have a cushion underneath your pelvis, underneath your shoulders or your head, or place a blanket over you, then find any comfortable way to finish. We have a good five minutes in Shavasana, so get comfy and enjoy it. If while you're here you need to move your body, then please feel free to do so, but just move very slowly and very mindfully. Either softly closing your eyes or keeping the gaze for a soft point of the ceiling. Take a couple of really deep breaths. Notice how that volume of traffic is in your mind. Hopefully the rush hour has passed. How does it feel? If you're happily just floating here in a Shavasana, then feel free to ignore the count of the breath. I'm just going to guide you through two rounds of that box breath again, and then leave it with you where you can let it go. Sink in with me if you can, if you want to. I'm going to inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold the breath. Three, two, one. Exhale, four. Three, two, 
One, hold the breath. Three, two, one. Inhale. Hold the breath. Exhale. Hold the breath. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. And I'll leave you to continue with that. If you're still counting, let it go. Begin to deepen the breath a little. A little bit of energy through it. Some soft movements into the extremities of the body, the fingers, the toes. Maybe just swallowing in the throat. If they aren't already, then bend the knees one at a time so your feet find the ground, your spine just readjusts. Take a really big breath in and a really full breath out. And again, take a really full breath in. And let it go. Roll yourself over to one side, whichever way feels best to go to. And then use the hands to help you press to a comfortable seat when you're ready to. So as we did at the start of the practice, keep the spine strong, the spine tall. Just soften around it. Bring to mind just one thing that you can feel grateful for today. Acknowledge one thing that you're proud of yourself for. And recognize how getting to your yoga mat has served you in some way today. And close that to the heart center as the palms come together. Take a full breath in. And allow the exhale to bring the head to the hands. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you guys. Have a lovely evening. The sun is now shining. How <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Take care. Thank you, Bernard. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Theo. Thanks, Chris. See you.